Hi there, in the following video I wanted to answer for you question 6 of the January 2011 OCR Core 4 Pass paper. Again, we're doing a question on vectors. Here we go. Question 6, it was a 10 mark question. It told you that uh, line 1 had the following equation and line 2 had the following equation. Remember a position, a point on the line, plus a direction, some amount of a direction, a point on the line, plus some amount of a direction. What's the angle between line 1 and line 2? Right, I'm going to, to make my notation easier, I'm going to state that the vector A is going to be the direction vector of line L1, which is 2, 3, and minus 4. I'm going to state that B is the direction vector of line 2, which is 0, 1 and negative 2. Now if you're trying to find the angle between two lines L1 and L2 you only care about the angle between the direction vectors and you're going to use the dot product formula namely that cos theta is A dot B divided by okay, the size of A or the modulus of A times the size of B or the modulus of B. Let's work out A dot B Let's work out mod A and mod B. Let's type it into this formula and let's uh, work out for ourselves how what the angle between the lines are. Right, A dot B, simple, A dot B. 2 times 0 is 0. 3 times 1 is 3. Minus 4 times minus 2 is 8. And you get 11. Right, what's the modulus of A? What's the size of vector A? Well, it's 2 squared plus 3 squared plus minus 4 squared okay so what does that equal 4 plus 9 is 13 plus 16 is 29 so that's the square root of 29 and what's the size of b well it's again the square root of 0 squared plus 1 squared plus minus 2 squared, okay, 0 plus 1 plus 4 is the square root of 5. Okay, so working out the angle between these two, let's use a different colour pen, therefore cos theta, cos the angle between the two, is a dot b, which is 11, all divided by root 29 times root 5. Tap that in your calculator and work out the inverse cos of it, so theta is the inverse cos of whatever you get to the above. So you inverse cos that and you should get 24 degrees. So theta is 24 degrees and that's the angle between line 1 and line 2. Okay, moving on to part 2 we need to show that lines L1 and L2 are what's called skew. Okay, there are two conditions for skewness. Okay, two lines are skew if firstly they do not intersect. So they do not intersect. So they share no common point. They do not intersect. And secondly, uh, they are skew if um, they are not, are not parallel. So they are the two conditions uh, for something to be skewed. Now, given that there was a line, there was an angle between L1 and L2 of 24 degrees, uh, we can say clearly um, that by part one, um, L1 and L2, L1 and L2 are not parallel because they have an angle of uh, 24 degrees between them so they can't be parallel lastly we have to show they do not intersect which is the harder thing to show about two things being skewed so let's rewrite uh, the line L1 I like writing it as a column vector this would be 3 plus 2s 0 plus 3s so I'm just going to write 3s and minus 2 minus 4s so minus 2 minus 4s. That is this line here and I'm going to write L2 as a column vector. 5 plus no t's so that's just 5. 
3 plus 1t, so I'm going to write that as 3 plus t, and 2 uh, minus 2t's as follows. Okay. Now, these two lines would intersect if the i coordinate, which is the same as this i coordinate, the j coordinate was the same as this j, and the k was the same as this k. So we've got three equations we can draw out from this. Namely, that if they intersect, if they did intersect, then 3 plus 2s would have to equal 5. 3s would have to equal 3 plus t. And minus 2 minus 4s would have to equal 2 minus 2t. Okay? I'm going to call those equations um, equation 1, equation 2, and equation 3. Okay, now from this equation here, straight away, if you subtract 3 from both sides and divide by 2, this equation tells you that s is already 1. And substituting that into the second equation, this would be 3 times 1 would be 3, subtract the 3, it would tell you that t is 0. So these two equations hold simultaneously if and only if s is 1 and t is 0. Okay. Now, do these two uh, values for s and t work in the third equation so they're consistent? Well, if I put 1 in here, I would get minus 2 minus 4, and that would be minus 6. And if I put 0 in here, I would get 2 minus 0, which is 2. So they do not work in the third equation. So you could write equation, um, equation 3 does not work, does not uh, work or is not consistent might be a better phrase does not work or is not consistent and therefore um, these lines do not intersect therefore uh, L1 and L2 do not intersect okay they do not intersect now given we already know they're not uh, parallel and the second thing they don't intersect therefore uh, L1 and L2 are what's called skew. Okay, uh, last part then. One of the numbers in L1 is changed so that the equation becomes the follow, uh, following. Okay, so basically, what have we done here? We've just changed that number, the the starting position vector from minus two in the in the k component to a. It is given that L1 and L2 now intersect, find A. Well, uh, all we have to do is go back to our previous equations, okay? We said that uh, L1 and L2 intersected, okay, uh, if the following uh, sets of equations held. So I'm just going to take these equations here, just take them right now here. Okay, now bear in mind, uh, we said that um, 3 plus 2 lots of s would be equal to 5, 0 plus 3 lots of s would be equal to 3 plus t, and now what we've done, this minus 2, this would now become the number a, so I'm going to change that for a, a minus 4s must equal 2 minus 2t, and here are our equations, uh, 1 two and three. Now we already got from one and two, they're the exact same equations as before, we already had from one and two that these are only solved when s is one and t is equal to zero. Okay, so putting that into the third equation, a minus four lots of one, a minus four must equal two minus zero and rearranging this, adding four to both sides, a must be equal to 6. Um, S, and, uh, S is 1 and T is 0 must satisfy the third equation. Given that we know they intersect, putting those values in allows us to determine that A is equal to 6. I hope you found the following answer useful in your revision for Core 4. Thanks for listening.